ask the person on the other side, why you come to church? Why you come to church? You know, we get all these reasons you not know, come. Some people say, well, I come because my mama went to church and her mama went to church. And so, you know, Sunday, that's what we just do. I just go to church on Sunday. Some people say, well, I go to church because I'm trying to find me a husband. Or I'm going to church because I'm trying to find me a wife. And some people might say, well, I'm going to church because I want to network. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to establish my little business a little flow. And Satan understands if he can begin to distort the purpose of church, then he can also distort what is there for what it was there to produce. Amen. 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 And if we turn church, you know, we build we build a stage, we get the lights and we like action. Because some people come to church because they like to see a show. I just love the choir. Oh, I just love how that man of God preached. I mean, it's not that you received what he was saying. You just thought it was entertaining or how he or she preached. But God had me write something um, down and I kind of put it on Facebook and I said, I want y'all to grasp this. And it's, it's, it's the title, but then there's a subtitle to what God wants to talk about today. And the title is, If You Major in Christ, you will always master over sin. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to get the if you major in Christ. See, when you go to school, when you you say when you go to a university or a college, or you have to. If I say pick a major, <laughs> amen. And when you pick a major, they're gonna give you a message, mm -hmm. amen. Amen. And when they they don't just. You don't just go to college and pick a major just to be there every day. Amen. Now what's funny about when you pick a major in college, um, you might be there and you might meet your husband. Amen? That's true. You might be there and you might meet some people that you may interact with in business, make some business connections. That's true. But those who actually went to that college understand that those were add-ons to why they were there because they were there to major in what they went for. Amen. 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 They were there, they walked in there with a desire to become something, hoping when they left there they could operate in what they desired to become. Church seemed to be a place now that people walk in and with really no desire to become something. And that's why they really have no desire to do anything when they leave. Church becomes a place, and this is, don't get me wrong, in church, just like in college, you might have to get healed, or you might have to go to the clinic, and there are things in that college, but that's not why you're there. Amen. There are clubs in that college, but that's not why you're there. You are there to transform into the thing you desire to major in. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah, there might be some parties in that college. People might get lit and get turned up, but the bottom line is, if you get distracted and your grades start suffering, guess what? You begin to decline and move away from the purpose you came there for. You know, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to pledge. I'm getting ready to do all that you're talking about doing, but now you're taking time and being distracted from what you actually went there for. Do you know I know that that's one university that was so funny. I, I remember years ago there was a university that went to, and I had, it was like um, about nine young ladies, and I know because they used to come here from that university. And out of nine young ladies, not one of them graduated. And they were not, and it was funny because of distraction. Many of them got taken, they got in relationships, got pregnant, they got abuse relationships, they got in all type of things that took them off. And guess what happened? The things that distracted them and took them off, they never majored in what they went there for, therefore never being able to go forth and accomplish that. Can I get an amen? amen? See, the enemy desires to give you a lot of distractions in life. And church Boy, Satan is cutting and he's, see, he, I heard a man of God preach his name, so he's cutting and he, because he knows if, if I can make you think church is about something other than what you, what you came here to become, 
You'll be like, man, church was good, but, but there'll be no change in you at all. There'll be nothing in you to affect somebody else. Because watch this. People who go to college and they major in something, uh, whatever they major in, put them in the position to affect other people. That's true. Amen. Amen. So that's why, so God says sin is an issue. And Jesus said, I came to destroy the works of the enemy. I'm, a, I'm amazed at how many people come to church and yet never understood why they was coming and sin still kicking their butt. They have no, they have no clue that they, if they had taken certain classes, that they would have understood that they actually have power over the thing that's supposed to be been dominating them. Amen. Amen. So I figure that we won't have to study the professor. Amen. We won't have to pay very close attention to the professor to understand because when you go to the university, don't nobody want a professor who don't know what they're talking about. If you do, I don't want you working for me. Because if you want somebody who don't know what they're talking about, then you ain't gonna know what you're talking about. Because the knowledge you're gonna get is from them. Y'all believe what I just said? The knowledge of what you majoring in, you're going to get it from the professor that you sit up under. So if that professor is not good at what he do, neither will you be. So, especially in college, so that's why when I go to college classes, I don't need no professor to want to be clowning around, sitting behind the desk looking at his phone, and I'm like, that's an easy A. Don't give me no, I know, I'm here to major in something. Right. I'm here to accomplish something. If I wanted to have fun, I should have stayed at home. Amen. That's true. Y'all with me? Amen. Majoring, but listen to listen to the question. Listen to what's been stated. If you major in Christ, you will master over sin. Amen. Amen. I want to get started. We're gonna start like this. Then who are we made? Who is this Christ person? Listen, John. I mean, Matthew, oh, let me see which one I put. I put both, but we're going to put, let's go to, let me, let me make sure, get it right. It's 317, so it's either John, three, John, seven, John 317. Oh, it's Matthew. I believe it's Matthew. I'll tell you, stay with me. I'm going to get you there. Is Matthew. I want to read it. I'm going to read it myself. I get to Matthew. It says, And the voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. Well pleased. He said, This is, I'm sorry, and the voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I know some of y'all may have a different. He said, Well, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased, whom I love, and I am well pleased. Amen. Now, I want to get you this about the professor that we're following. At the time that the voice came from heaven, he's talking to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. He said, this is my son. He identifies Jesus as the son of God. Amen. Jesus has come to John the Baptist to be baptized. The heavens open up and God begins to speak. And he said, this is my son in whom I love and I am well pleased. Now, I want y'all to get this is powerful. The father is saying, acknowledging him as his son and who he loved, but he said, I'm well pleased with him. Now, I want y'all to get this is that, because I want y'all to understand about what you're studying, what you're coming, what you're majoring in. You're majoring in Christ. Jesus had done absolutely nothing, he had not done one miracle. He had not done one miracle. He had not done one sign of wonder. He had not done anything. But the father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And whom I love and well pleased. Go, go read your Bible. And when he talks about it, this is his son. Jesus said, 30 years old, he is being baptized. The only documented thing that's in the Bible from the time that Jesus is uh, from 30 years old is when he is in the book of Luke is when he was 12. 
So that means to understand what he is pleased about, you have to go to 12. Amen. 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 And in 12, when Jesus was 12 years old, the Bible says he was found in the temple. See, it ain't about being in the classroom. It was about what he was doing in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. See, you can be in church. It's not about being here. If you come to major, it's about what you're doing in here. Yeah. And the Bible says when Jesus was 12 years old inside the college temple, I'm going to call it the college. The Bible says he was learning and he was expounding. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the word and he was expounding on the word. He was learning and expounding on the word. And as a matter of fact, he left his parents to go be in a place where the word was. Amen. Amen. And his parents had traveled some days and realized that Jesus was not with them. So they went back and they searched for him, but they found him in the college temple. Amen, amen. And when they asked him, why did you do this? And he said, do you not know I must be about my father's business? I want everybody in the room to say, I must, I must be, be about, about my father's business. Say, my father's father father business. business. So one thing about coming to church, it ain't about your business. Amen. I'm coming here to learn about my father's business. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because if the father, he said, this is my son, whom I will please. So I have to gather that the reason he was pleased, because the father didn't mind spending time, the son didn't mind spending time learning of the father. Amen. So have we forgotten? about coming to church because when you come to church you should be coming to learn about your Amen. we should be coming to learn about the father and not only should we be coming to learn about the father but the father said something about the son in the son learning about the father the father said I'm well pleased I want to take this. In the son learning about the father, the father was well. Please. Not because he had done a miracle. Not because he had spoken in tongue. Those things are good and wonderful. But he was pleased about the relationship. Amen. Amen. Mm. Look at someone say, God, please with me. Because I understand. We got a relationship. I, I need somebody to just say, uh, I need a, where's a parent with a child for me, a baby? Stand up with your baby. Those who have a baby, stand up for me. Just stand up. Mothers, all the mothers grab babies too. Don't be looking at them. Look, Chris trying to stay down to my eye. No, no, I want the little babies, just the little babies, just the little babies. Uh, Dad, I know what's your daughter's name? Zendaya. Zendaya. You love Zendaya? What has she done? <laughs> I mean, she she boo boo on herself. Did she, you still have to wipe her butt? Yeah. She ain't paying for no groceries, right? No. no. Zendaya just. Okay, maybe Zendaya. Maybe just Zendaya just don't know yet. Okay, let's 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 see. What's your baby name? Joshua. Joshua. Look at Joshua. Joshua must got a job. Joshua look thick over there too. Joshua look, thick. Joshua, Joshua look like he can eat and work. You know what I'm saying? Joshua working? He working? Yeah, you know, I'm sure he is. Let me ask you, you love Joshua? You do? What has Joshua done? Okay. What's, what's your son's name? He must have wrote a book and they can help him. You, 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 you love Liam a whole lot? You love Joshua a whole lot? You, you love a whole lot? But what have they done? They ain't praise. Unless you want to count the Liam back there. Nah, 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 that's praise. He's speaking in tongues. But, you know. Would you say, but that's your son, right? That's your daughter, right? That's your son, right? And they came out of you. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And though they do, they probably be all over the, they probably, oh, we, I definitely got to get uh, in the back. <laughs> journey. <laughs> journey. That's journey, right? <laughs> what journey that on? Journey, instead of, other, other than going in the kitchen, putting all the things out of the kitchen. <laughs> what I'm, God is trying to show you is that they did nothing to earn the love of their parents. It is merely the connection. And the parents did the labor. The, pa the parents did the pushing. And now the parents are doing the traveling to shape and mold that child. Into an image. Amen. 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 And those children gonna bear beautiful two two ladies and two young men. They gonna do some stuff. And even though those parents are times going to chastise them and correct them, it won't break the connection because the connection was never based on what they were doing in the first place. Amen. Hallelujah. Your connection with God, and you should have learned that in school, it was never based upon what you was doing. It was based on everything he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach. Amen. 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 But if I have a relationship, now one thing that the parents going to want to do, one thing the children going to want to do, and they're going to notice as they get a little older, they're going to be like dancing, they're going to be like, Mama, watch this. And they're going to be running and they're going to my daddy, watch this. They're going to begin to indulge in activities to try to please the one that's been loving on them. Amen. 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 Mama, here go my report card. Look. Oh, look at you. But well, mom is going to rejoice about the grace, but, and she loves the grace, but it was not the grace that brought the connection. Amen. 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 The connection, that's why God connect, that's why God sent his son. And what birth the connection had? Nothing. The only thing that was attached to birth in the connection was love. Amen. Amen. It was love. So if it was love, then the things that we're doing after that process is to please the one who has loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the father was pleased because the son showed he had a desire to want to know him. Amen. 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 Y'all with me? Amen. All right, brother. Thank you for those beautiful kids that boo boo and eat and, and journey all over the place. He says, I'm pleased with my son. John 17, 19 says, and for their sakes, and the son says about the father, this is what the son says, and for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. I want you to go to John 17 and I want to show you something about John 17 that's interesting. And I, I struck up that verse because we're talking about the one that pleased the Father, but there was a sanctification, but the sanctification came through the relationship. Amen. I'm going to show you. In John 17, I want us to read, let's see. Read it the 14th verse. We're going to read down a little bit. Just read that. I want to give an outline on this. John, John 17. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word, and, thy, and the world hath hated them. So, the one who sat at the word, the one who at 12 years old was sitting in the sanctuary drinking the word, Finds himself now giving what he's been drinking. Amen, amen. You can't educate somebody unless you've been educated first. Amen. 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 He says, go ahead. Because they are not of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. See this, y'all gotta get this. This birth has is not the same birth as the world. Amen. 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 Good. It's not the same birth as the world. Come keep reading. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shalt takest them out of the world, but that thou shalt keepest them from the evil. So the one who was birthed by the world at 12 years old, who the father said, I am well pleased, he is now keeping those he's raising in the world. And he, I mean, he's keeping them in the word, but he says the word that he's keeping them in is not keeping them. They're in the world, but they're no longer of the world. Of the world. There's a separation when you go to school. Amen. What you're learning in school is separating you from with the old. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen, amen, amen. Keep going. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, the one, the profession that's teaching them, he's not of the world, so you can't go to school if somebody is preaching Christ when you go to church, if they're preaching what they should be preaching, it should be separating you from your old to your new. Amen. 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 Come on. Let's look at it from a practical perspective. If you're going to school to be a nurse, and you're going to school and you're taking these classes to be a nurse, how do you know once you graduate and you, you get your license to be a nurse, you've just been separated from your old financial status, from your new financial status. Your, 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 what you have majored in has put you into a new financial status. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. That you could have never got into unless you went to school. That's true. Amen. Unless you passed all the tests. Those tests and everything put you into a new financial bracket. That's true. They qualified you for a new financial bracket. That's all he's saying. He's saying, when you come to church and they are preaching Jesus Christ the word, it should be sep it should be separating you from a new life bracket. Amen. 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 From your old life to your new life. There should be something changing in you. Amen. Because it's kind of crazy to go to school and get all that knowledge and nothing changed in you. You would turn around and say, that's a waste of time. Why did I even go? Go ahead. Sanctify them through the through thy truth. He says, sanctify them truth. Set them apart by the truth. Go ahead. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. It is the word. Say it's the word. It's the word. Say when the word is truth. When the word is truth. Say when the word is truth. When the word is truth. It's gonna sanctify you. It's gonna sanctify you. That means set you apart. Set you apart. Everybody say set apart. Set apart. From a world that's full of lies. From a world that's full of lies. How many know it? If you walk in truth. You're going to look different from people who walk in lies. Yes, sure. Amen. Amen. If you are walking in the word of God, you ought to look different from those who are walking in lies. Amen. That's it. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, uh -huh. Even so have I also sent them into the world. So y'all gotta get this. From 14, the word being sanctified, the whole thing had a purpose. Amen. In other words, he didn't have disciples to follow him because it was fun. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He had a purpose for them following for him sitting at the word, and they're saying, This is he said, This is my son whom I am well pleased. He said, When I sat at the word, when I'm at the word, and my father saw me, and my father said, This is my son whom I well please. My father sent me into the world. world. So that means I went through a process with my father to go to work. Amen. Amen. That's good. The work wasn't in the four walls. When I sat with my father, he said he sent me into the world. And then he turns around and says, The ones I'm training, I'm training them with the same purpose. Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I won't get me wrong. I, I like that you're doing some stuff in the church. And in every, in every college, you have people have different assignments and positions. You have the secretary, you have the janitors to maintain the building. But the main picture is what you're majoring there for. And what you're majoring, no matter, you might have music class because you're going to do some music. You might have dance. And all those are good. But your major is in Christ. Amen. Amen. And Christ and I sanctified myself. I set myself apart from the world. And I set myself under the word of God that I may be able to be sent back to the world. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
I got a purpose. I'm going back to work. See, watch this. But see, Satan say, no, if I could just change the purpose of the church and realize that church was never about you being trained and getting educated and getting knowledge and growing in Christ and being sent into the world for a purpose. Because now, come on, if you go to college and you went to four years, five years of college, the college don't want to send you forth into what you major for. That's true. That's right. That's right. They're going to want you to go, and it's going to be a blessing on you going forth in what you major in. Amen. And the college do stuff like this. They give you internship, and they put you in pressure situations. Why? To make sure you'll be able to, that you won't fall apart, depending on what you major in. Amen. 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 Read a little bit more before we go. Come on, go ahead. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. It's important to have professors who are walking in what you're being taught in. That's good. Amen. 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 I'm not just saying teaching it. I'm not saying just to be taught it. I need some professors who can walk in it. Amen. Amen. Anybody can read a book and teach you about something, but can you teach me how to apply it? That's why the school they do, <laughs> they do uh, what we call, I call it application. They do internship. Why? Wow. To see if you can apply. Because you can go in that room and quote a lot of stuff you read in a book, but they want to know can you apply what you read in that book? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible will tell us, think it not strange when trials come to try your faith. Faith come by. Yeah. Jesus was sitting at the feet hearing the word. Amen. Amen. Which set him apart from the, the world. Then he began to train those to set him apart. And told them, don't think it's strange. There are going to be some tests. That's good. To see what? If you can apply the very word that I've been teaching you. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's why Satan, boy, he'd be like, don't go to church. Or he'll choose a church that's not going to be about really training you. Because Satan don't mind you going to church if you ain't willing, really willing to be trained or be transformed. Because why? You're no threat to him outside. He'll make you feel like you are threat to him. He'll, he'll let you feel like you are threat to him in, in here. You know how some people, you, we fake like we was great students. Until you got out there and ran into somebody who was majoring in what you and they realized you ain't, you ain't know what you thought you knew. And you tried to fake it till you make it. Then they was like, nah, you ain't qualified. Why? You didn't know the basics of what we was talking about. Mm -hmm. Are we getting something? Amen. Read, we almost read, 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 read the next verse. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So he says, I'm not praying for them. I'm also praying for the ones who are going to come after them. So what is he saying? My teaching is not going to change. Amen. I don't care if styles change. I don't care if you want bra you wear braids today and you wear not braids tomorrow. I don't care if men want to wear this uh, different, if they want to wear baggies today. Styles can change and all that can change. He said, but what I'm teaching them, those who are going to believe on their words get the same cover. Amen. Because we don't start thinking because it's 2000, we're going to make the word, we're going to start changing the word to start looking. No, the word is still producing that which makes God please. Amen? Amen. Okay. So it's so for us to say it's for us too. Say it's for us too. Okay, let me let me give you another story. So and now, now we understand what you said. And for their sake I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. John 8:29, I'll read this. And he, and he who sent me is with me. And the Father has not left me alone. For I always do those things 
that please him. Amen. Oh, y'all got to get that. He said, he who sent me. We found out who was sent. He said, the Father sent me. And Jesus saying, who is our professor, who I want the preachers to preach. He said, I always do those things that please the Father. The Father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. In verse, and let's go back. In verse right here, John 8, 9, he said, I always do those things that please the Father. He's the Word made flesh. And he says, what I desire to do are the things that please who is my Father. Amen. But how does he know what pleased the Father? Because when he was 12, he was partaking of learning of the Father. Amen. It's amazing in church today that we are putting people in positions who never sat down and learned who the Father is. And they have no desire to please the Father. Wow. Their whole desire is to please themselves. Amen. That is the new false doctrine. But how you gonna follow the word and the word tells you that it's this his, that he always pleases the father. So if the word if, if the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, if the word is leading you, then guess what? And the word is abiding in you, and you are abiding in the word, then your now desire is to please your father. Amen. 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 Right. That's why I can't sleep with you. Why? I got a heart to please my father. Amen. That's why I can't get lit up with you and curse with you. Know what? I got a heart to please my father. Amen. Amen. I now know what pleases him. Why? Because I've been eating from my father. Amen. Amen. See, y'all, I guarantee you if we can come back and we can go, it will, we're not going to do that. <laughs> if we can go in time, and have them same mothers stand up. Give them five years when they're about six or seven years old. They'll come back and say, but my baby sitting here, I come in the room, they start doing flips and they start, mama look at me and they start doing things to please the one that showed them what love is. Amen. <laughs> Some of us, our battle is <laughs> Sometimes we were connected to people who didn't show us what love was. That's true. They gave you a perverted ideal of what love was. Amen. Some of us were molested. Some of us were lied to. And some of us were beaten. Some of us were mistreated by the people who said they loved us. Amen. Therefore giving us a perverted view of love. Amen. And because we had a perverted view of love, mm -hmm. we spent our life trying to find it yeah. from people. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. And then we come to God, and God wants to reveal what love is to us. Mm -hmm. And your battle today is that you are struggling with your ideal of love versus God's. Everybody mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because sometimes people go to college thinking they already know. Come on. The professor can't tell you nothing. No, you ain't had a class. You, you take one class, and then you, you, you take algebra one, and you go going algebra two, talking about, yeah, professor, that's wrong. And they're like, if you don't sit your little narrow behind down. And that's what we do. We have a couple experiences in life, and you start thinking nobody can't tell you nothing. Mercy, Lord. <laughs> Well, I had me a boyfriend when I was in seventh grade, so I know, I know when it's time to kiss when I'm in twelve. Wow. You, number one, you never had no business having one of some, some boyfriend in seventh grade. Amen. Amen. But you think you know how to do things because of your perverted experiences. Wow. Help us, Lord. And when somebody try to tell you the right way, you get mad and you get angry. But see, God ain't mad at you because what he allows is he allows you to come to the end of yourself in the thing that you think is love that now you begin to look for real love. Amen. 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 Are we learning something? Amen. So, we find out, he said, and he who said, he said, I always, man, I think it messed me up because you, he said, I always do those things. That's the word. The word says I always. So guess what? If you ever 
don't want to please the Father, just do it. The Father. Hey, come on, man, come on, probably tell me again. If you ever want to do, if you ever want to please God, you ain't got to do no flips. You don't have to run and jump and, and go crazy. You just got to do what the Word say. Amen. Amen. Now, if the Word tells you to jump up three times, then jump three times. Hallelujah. Well, that look crazy. I don't care how I look. I'm trying to please my father. Amen. If the word tell you, don't sleep with him, don't sleep with him. Why? I'm trying to please my father. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what Satan did to mess it up. He took fathers out of the household. He attacked men. And when he attacked men, when fathers left, see a mother, look at me, mothers are magnificent. They off the chain. And too many of them are doing both jobs. But the reality is, a mother can't teach you what a man is because she ain't no man. And she can't give you a man's love because she ain't no man. And we want to say, you know, we got the women's little movement. We don't need no man. You are an absolute liar. If you don't need no man, you ain't need your dad. And the reason you hurt is because you didn't have your dad. Are we learning something? Say, we're going to get taught today. John 12, 49. I'm going for Jesus. He said, I always, he said for I did not speak on my own. Because I want to know how he did. He, he, if the word says, I always did to please the Father, I want to study that. I want to know how he moved, how he acted. His life. If I want to please the Father, I got to study the professor. The first thing the professor began to talk about in, in John 12, 49, he said, For I did not speak on my own. Ooh. So to please the Father, you might want to stop running your mouth all the time. We got too many people in the church talking about, but I heal. When Jesus opened up his mouth when he was facing the adversary, when Jesus opened up his mouth when he was facing a liar, he didn't say, I feel. He said, it is written. But how? But why was he able to say it was written? Because at 12 years old, he was in class. Amen. That's good. See, when you're not in class, you don't know how to respond correctly. Yeah. And the way you and I have responded got us in trouble. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? Somebody tried you, and because you never said in class, because you never said under Christ, you never came into Christ, but somebody tried you. Oh, I know they ain't trying to be like that. You blank, 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 blank. What's up, poo poo? <laughs> but if you study Christ, he would never move like that. Amen. And there are people in church who say they have studied in Christ, but when they get controversy hit their way, they don't, I don't see it. Come on, come on, come on. I, I don't see it. When temptation come, I don't see who you've been studying. When adversity come, I don't see who you've been studying. Amen. Yes, I saw you in church tomorrow. I saw you. <laughs> it's just when you were at work. And the person accidentally bumped into you and your favorite cup fell. I guess you took off. Yo, Jesus. You in college. And everybody over there, they, they jamming and they getting high. And they tripping and everybody letting people sneak into their dorms and everybody doing all that. But you say, I want to know God and I'm in class. And yet your flesh is like, I don't know what that is. But your spirit should be saying, that ain't, uh -huh, I made you in Christ. That's not, that's sin and that's not, that ain't me. Amen. 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 And when they start, what you green? You ain't just no no, I'm a child of the king. Amen. Amen. I know my identity because he said this is my son in whom I am well pleased oh I know him because why he studied me and because he studied me his behavior revealed that we have some fellowship Amen. 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 that's why you can't be in church 
preaching black, white, Republican, Democrat. <laughs> Why? Because those identities don't change you. Man, when God was gone, this was so good. He, he, he preached this to me the whole week. So it was good. He said, for, for I did not speak on my own, but the Father. Everybody say, but the Father. But the Father. Say, but the Father. But the Father. Say, but the Father. But the Father. Have you ever seen children who sound like their parents? Yeah. Yeah. See, when you spend a whole lot of time with somebody, you're like, I could tell you Jojo daughter. <laughs> you Jojo daughter. Even the way you say, even the way you say no. Now, you're joking. Yeah, you're joking. <laughs> it's a terrible thing when you've been birthed by one thing, but you've been raised by something different. Some people are like, see, that's why we, we that's why you have young girls and young guys when, when they don't have their father, they, they really want to find out their father. Why? Because they're trying to find out why they have these certain demeanors. How, I wonder why I always do this. Or why do I act? And they're trying to find that other connection. Why they, you know, they're trying to find out why I act like this a little bit. So when they find the people, they're like, oh, that's why I act like that. But I was still lost because you weren't there to show me. But I want y'all to understand something. Say, say good, news. good news. Your Heavenly Father said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So I'm always there to show you. Sometimes we don't like him showing us, but he's going to be there to show us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, He says, for I, did, for I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. See, God changed. My relationship changed now all that I have spoken. Uh -huh. I've been sitting. How many of you know that a nurse conversation changed? Come on, don't act funny. A nurse, when she go to school, I promise you, the way she talked before she took them classes, the way she talked about anatomy in the body, the way she, before she took them classes, she don't sound the same way. Amen. A police officer, thank you, changed. I know. I went through the academy. When you go in there, you talk about And then when you come out, your language changed because what you have taught began to now infiltrate how you move. Amen. That's true. That's true. Can I get an amen? Amen. See, Whatever you'll be educated by is going to begin to transform how you act. Amen. You ain't grew up speaking slang. No. You didn't grow up speaking like that. You know, what's some slang words? You know, like, let's lit. What are some words? <laughs> put my daughter, I should have put my daughter on the spot, but I ain't gonna <laughs> Give me a word. Huh? Her. 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 Okay. Uh. Her. What does that mean? What does it mean? What's up? Her. What's up? Her. That sounds like something was in the bathroom. Hey, we heard it. No. What's up? Hey, hey. But you learn that from the act. You learn that from the atmosphere you've been in. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I got my ideas and my perspective on sex in the atmosphere I was in. True, true. I got my lying and deceiving and manipulation from the atmosphere you were in. Yes, true, Lord. Do you all know that, uh, what's his name? Um, Samuel. Samuel was the prophet. Mm -hmm. Saul was made king, right? Yeah. When Saul walked in an atmosphere of prophets, he instantly began to prophesy. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. There are times, I'm going to tell you something, I'm that to, to still work today. You know why? I found myself watching something and I found that spirit, I was like, I saw myself, I said, oh, that was interesting how that began to flow like that and I just watched it and it was begin to flow like that. Mm -hmm. When the spirit of God is present, when you are in the atmosphere, everybody, when I teach in biology, Everybody in this room is going to begin to see a different language. Mm -hmm. But once you graduate, that language is going to be defined about how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Are we getting this? Mm -hmm. 
I want us to get it. So that's why God has to transform us. Because he has to take you out of the world, which caused you to have ideas on how you saw yourself. And the ideas on how you and I saw us in the world, it broke us, it hurt us, it wounded us, it scarred us. And now he has to bring you into the classroom and begin to renew your mind by the word of God. That you can begin to see yourself as the princess of the king that you are called to be since the beginning of time. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, I'm a princess, I'm a king. Make sure you know which one you are. So I want to get this right. For I always do those things that please him. When I talk, I please him. Say when I talk, I please him. John 15, 19 says, Jesus gave him answer. Jesus gave him this answer. Verily, 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 I truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He said, the son can do nothing by himself. So he says, when you see me talk, it's because of the Father. Amen. But my connection, I can't do nothing without him. Uh -huh. I need that connection to life to be able to operate in life. Amen. You know, the mothers that stood up, if no mothers left them kids in that house, and the fathers left them kids in that house, and just left for a month, them kids gonna die. Because they can do nothing without that connection. I'm amazed at how many people try to do things without God. And the Bible says, everything we do without him, he said, unless the Lord build the house, he who build it, he who build it, build it in vain. Have you, how many of us have built some things without God and at the end you found it was vain? Amen. Everybody should raise their hand. Amen. You built some relationships at the end you was broken and hurt. Amen. You tried to build, making some money at the end you felt you found you found yourself in a messed up situation. Some people tried to build something, they found themselves in prison. Some people tried to build it, found themselves in an abortion clinic. Trying to build without God puts you in situations to hurt and destroy other people and yourself. Because you're always trying to find love in a place that's unstable. You're always trying to find security in a place that's unstable. That's why one of the most true, one of the truest statements, you hear people, man, in my other job, takes me, my other job where I deal with relationships, you know what I'm talking about, the job I have, to, you know, um, be strong, healthy relationships, I do a lot of counseling with couples and people like that, and I found out, do you know how many times I hear from black, white, Spanish, man, I was trying to find love in the wrong place. I was looking for love in all the wrong place. I was looking to feel something because I felt disconnected. I wanted to feel connected, so I started drinking and I thought that would make me feel connected, but it made me more empty. And it took me places I didn't want to go. I thought I started getting, I started getting high and, it, and I thought it better take away the pain and I found that that connection couldn't change me either. Matter of fact, matter of fact it began to damage me more. And I thought if I start just having sex with people over and over again, I'll feel connected. But I found out that didn't work either because the pleasure lasted for a few minutes and then it was gone. And no matter where I ran, I was still empty. I thought if I build a corporation, that was going to do it for me. I thought if I did this, that's going to do it for me. I thought if I made a lot of money, that's going to do it for me. But see, everything has to be connected to what God designed it or to die. Take a star out of the sky, what happened to it? It died. Take a fish out of water, what happened to it? It dies. Take a tree out of the ground, what happens? It dies. Separate somebody from God. Amen. Amen. Preach. Amen. And they spend their whole life trying to find love. So he says, and Jesus gave them this answer, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do, he can do only what he sees the father do. Because whatever the father does, the son also do. Jesus said, whatever you see me do, that's what the father do. See, when the family is close, <laughs> you watch the daughter, you'll find some things resembling to the mom. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a relation. In a close relationship, you can't help but to copy some of the things you see. Amen. That's true. Amen. 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 You know, I'm gonna tell you, one time I was at Edison. Well, this girl, young girl was Edison. She was, she was not, she was, she was uh, going through it. She was cursing out the teacher. She was acting up. I mean, and they was talking to her about really 
uh, her dress code and certain things, and she was really angry about a certain thing. And, and they called her auntie. And she didn't stay with her mom. Her auntie came to the school. Her auntie walked in the school, cursing out, going off. I said, oh, I understand. I understand what she connected to. Amen. See, some of us treat our mouth, our mouth comes from the people we grew up with. That's true. Mm -hmm. We treat our body by the way the people we grew up with. That's true. But look at somebody I'm so glad God called me. I'm so glad my father called me home. He says, the father does, the sees all you do with the father's touch. Okay, let's go. John 14, 19 says, Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still do not know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? It's amazing that we're in church and you don't understand I'm preaching Christ and you don't understand who Christ is showing. If I'm preaching Christ, the word of God, and Jesus said, when you see me, you see the father, then what I'm talking to you about is causing you to see the father's heart on how to please the father. So church is about you getting to know who your father is. Amen. So you can put so your father can get to know who you are and you can create a relationship and the father's pleased with you because you know him and and you're pleased with the father and you want to just do whatever it's, you want to please you're pleased with the father because of what he gave you and what you just want to do whatever he tell you to do to please him. Amen. Amen. Look at someone say, I want to please the father. I want to please the father. You know what's amazing about this new gospel? It's all about you pleasing yourself. But that's the same gospel you had before you were saved. Yes, uh -huh. Amen? Amen. What a relationship. The one. If I say the one. The one. John 17, 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, are in me, and I'm in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the whole world may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, the way the world going to know, because mm -hmm. everybody that major in my class going to look like me, I'm going to look like them, and we're going to act the same. Amen. Amen. In other words, you're going to be forgiven. You're going to be forgiven. You're going to be compassionate, because we all needed the same thing to be saved. Amen. So I can't judge you. You can't judge me, because the Bible said we have all sin and fallen short of the glory of God. We, none of us was in a position to bring God's glory because none of us was in a position to please Him. Why? Because we were separated. But because of Jesus. Somebody said because of Jesus. Because of Jesus connecting us back to the Father and He is our example on how to please the Father. Why? Because the Word says I always know how to please the Father. So when I follow Jesus, the Word, I'm learning how to please the Father. And, the, and when the world look at you, they see the way you live. They say, oh, I know who your daddy is. That's why the Bible says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father who are in heaven. He said, your life ought to look like your father. But your life ought to look like who you in fellowship with. If you're going to say you mind, you, the way you talk should look like me. If you're going to say you mind, the things you do ought to look like me. Amen. Look, look at some second. I'm getting there. I'm growing up. Because see, when we look like him, he can send us into the world to change those who are struggling with looking like themselves. Amen. Amen. That's good. He said that they may be one, as we are one. In the word, in the word and in deed. If I say in, in the word, and in deed. Looking like the Father. Acting like the Father. Amen. John 17, John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. Say, Jesus said, I am the vine. Everybody say, Jesus is the vine. I need everybody to say, Jesus is the vine. Say, you are the branches. Say, I'm the branch. Raise your hand say, I'm the branch. Okay. I'm the branch. Watch what Jesus said. You're the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. He said, your connection in me and I'm in you are going to bear fruit. Amen. Fruit means the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. He says, if we are one, 
when people see you, if Jesus, Jesus, I'm an apple, when they see you, you ought to be an apple. She said, I'm an orange. When they see you, you ought to be an orange. So I shouldn't bite at you and taste, and taste a lemon. And Satan's job is to paint the orange. Satan is a pretender. His job is to try to paint the lemon orange. Mm. Well, you can make some of the outside look different, but it's going to still taste the same. That's good. You can paint somebody, they can look religious on the outside, but on the inside. When you bite into their life, wait a minute. You're bitter. You're angry. You're unforgiving. You're broken. Amen? Amen. He says, watch what he say next. You bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But isn't that what Jesus said? I can do nothing apart from the Father. Amen. So how are you going to be connected with Jesus and try to do something apart from God? Amen. See, that people tomorrow, they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. Amen. Then you're not connected. Because that's your connection. Amen. You can't skip the connection. You can't skip Jesus and go to the Lord. Why? He the mind. Amen. You're the branch. He is what? He is, that's why he said, I sanctified myself that they may know truth. He is the one who became into the world that was different. That when you now learn from him, you become different. Amen. Amen. He, is your, he is yours and my example. Are we getting this? Yes, Amen. See, the problem with some of us is you skip the class too much. Lord. Or you go on the classes of the world. You're going to world classes. See, the club is a world class. It is. Places that that are generate you operating in your flesh are world classes. Getting drunk, lick it up, sex and all, that's world classes. Those are not the classes of God. Amen. See, I can't do nothing without being connected to him. And what am I saying? I can't produce any change in my life by myself. Amen. Amen. I can't produce any fruit that reflects who he is by myself. Don't get it twisted. There are people who do good things, but they're not good people. Amen. Amen. Amen, that's true. There are people who do kind things, but they are not kind. Come on, y'all looking at me like y'all ain't never. Some of us did. You were kind for a purpose. You weren't really kind. True. True. I did this for you. I was nice for a purpose. I'm not really nice. I took you to dinner. I took you out to eat. I took you to the movies. You said he's so nice. Yes, because later on you're gonna sleep with me. And if you don't, I'm gonna show you how nasty I am. can feed the hungry but it's attached right off. Mm -hmm. Some people are preaching because they want attention. God knows our hidden agenda. But watch this. When we receive the seed of Christ Christ doesn't birth something in you that's for 10. What he's birthing in you is actually who he is. So watch this. When you are in fellowship with Christ and you go to school and he begin to give you the word, he birthed kindness in you. So now, kindness is not what you do, it's who you are. Somebody gonna get you. It's you. So that means no matter what storm come your way, people wonder why is this person always kind? Why? That's who I birthed. That's who I am. That's what. That's who. And the reason that God had to go through a process with you, and you had to go through, a, and God put you in that trial because He had the birth it in you. Amen. Amen. Love was not in us, not but I began to fellowship with God through His Son Jesus Christ. And I began to learn, not love for a reason. Love began to be birthed in me. Amen. And when love is birthed,
work in you, it doesn't change because of circumstances. It doesn't change because of situations. See, we like the love, but we like the love because God loves because that's who he is. He can't change who he is. If you curse him up, he can't change it. If you hate him, you can't, can't change it. If you reject him, he can't change it. That's his very essence of who he is. Giving, you have a gift for giving. If you don't give me nothing, I'm still going to give. Amen. If you take from me, I'm going to still give. Why? That's who I am. Amen. When it's not who you are, you are unstable. Yeah. One day you kind, the next day you curse somebody out. You're spiritually schizophrenic. <laughs> Y'all laugh. We got some schizophrenic so called Christians. I love you. Man, that girl make me so sick I can't stand her. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's <laughs> schizophrenic. You don't know who you are. You look in the mirror, you don't even know who you are. One minute you pray to God, let's on your back. <laughs> you see, it's a friend. You lost. You can't stand for nothing because you don't even know who you are. You can't stand on nothing because you don't know who you are. You are a child with no identity. And without an identity, you can't represent nothing. Amen. You represent this one day. You represent the thug life one day. Next time you're trying to be suburban Americans. Hello. God faith. That's it. And God is trying to call you into the classroom to teach you who you are. He said, what you mean? Did you, did you see the scripture? He said, this is my son. He gave him identity. He said, he belongs to me. God has been knocking at the door, many of us in this room, trying to make you his. And you telling God, no, I belong to the devil to step off. Wow. And your actions tell who you belong to. I'm not, let me give you my, I'm not giving you my, the scripture says, who you yield your members to, that's your daddy. See, we think we, we serve, either we're not serving God or we ain't serving nobody. That's your first line of deception. Mm -hmm. If you don't serve God, you serve Satan. Mm -hmm. And we all, at one point, serve Satan. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And the only problem is, this is your deception. The one you serve, the one that's making you feel good, the one that's got you feeling like you he gonna kill you. He gonna destroy you, because he can't change his nature. So he's letting you have fun. Come on, this is what he gonna do. He gonna put a Twinkie in front of you, because I used to like Twinkies. Probably my whole whole Twinkies now. You can see like I said Twinkie. Yeah, that right there. Get in front. And because you're so blind, you're like, just leave me around. But see, his, his, his number one agenda is to lead me off a cliff. To lead me into HIV. To lead me into prison. Because he hates me. Let me tell you why he hates you. Because he knows that you were called to be in the image of God himself. And he hates God. So he told God, I'm going to get what you made to worship me. But because I hate you when they worship me, I'm going to torment them for eternity. I'm going to treat them like garbage for eternity. But how, how can I get them? I'm going to appeal to their flesh. I'm going to appeal to making them feel. The Bible says in the last days, people are going to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of love. I'm going to make them feel good. So you follow it. And now when you follow it, you're so far away from your dreams. When you was a little girl, you wanted to do this. And then now you're doing things you never saw yourself doing. You got brothers running up and you got sisters doing it. You doing things you're doing with your body and your mind. You degrade and follow yourself and you think it's funny. Praise the Lord. When you don't even know the last name, you don't even know the middle name of the person you slept with. 
You don't even, you don't even know his mama or his daddy. And now a society has moved so much in this darkness, it applauds you. Girl, you got that one night stand? Yeah. Or you sleep with men? Or you sleep with women and with men? You sleep with women and two women? Oh, and you think what you're doing is good because the Bible says darkness has increased itself. Let me tell you what the word darkness comes from. It derives from the word ignorance. You are ignorant because you, because you left class. You didn't sit down and learn what pleased God. Because you're like, that's boring. I'm not learning anything. That's boring. And that's why God is not pleased with your life. But he's not mad you. He's not pleased with your life because you're like, your life is heading toward destruction. Mercy, Lord. And Satan sitting there saying, just give him a little bit more. A little bit more money. One more. You know what Satan likes to say. Try one more time. Come on. A little bit more. And you actually think it's not going to end. That's why when people say, let me tell you something. Thank you, Papa. When people say, I'm not ready to serve God, what they're saying is, Satan killed me a little bit more. They're saying, I want to be destroyed. What they're actually saying, and they don't know it, they're saying is, I want to be destroyed. Because that's what Satan's plan is, to destroy you. And first of all, this is where their deception is. Let me tell you the deceit. This is where the deceit is. They actually think they don't want to control. I can quit when I want to quit. I can do sound. Boy, you don't even know you're about, You don't even know you're trapped. Okay. If you can quit when you want to quit, you can quit it already. You're in bondage. You're in bondage. But somebody should say, I'm so glad that God is a rescue. I'm so glad that God looked past my faults and know that I need a Savior. That's why they call him Savior. Come on, that's why they call him Savior. Come on, somebody. That's why they call him Jesus. That's why they call him Jesus. That's why they call him, the, why they call him the one who will get the lost. That's why they call him the one who loves who, 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 the one who loves the lost. That's why they call him the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. That's why they call him I'm your redeemer. Amen. I'm your redeemer. Because you were lost. Then I came to get you. Amen. I came to get you. You thought, man, you thought being a man, how many women I slayed of a man? You ain't even know the devil had you slain to kill you, to destroy you or your family. Five minutes of sex to destroy everything that you Because you're in bond. You can't quit. You need Jesus. Because every time you think you got it, you come temptation. Getting married don't cure lust. Jesus does. I know. I had lust. Amen. 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 But say love. I say love. love. See, love searching you out. Amen. Because love, God, love, you were not created to be destroyed. Amen. You were not created to be broken. You were not created to be used. You were created to be the glory of God. Amen. You thought, yeah, I better get it. You, you, don't, you don't even know. You were created to be the glory of God. That's why the Bible says. <laughs> We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory. Sin caused us to fall short of what we was called to be, what the glory of God. But see, that's okay because God had a plan. Amen. And in his plan, he came to restore you back to that glory. Hallelujah. He came, come on, somebody should get excited. He came to restore you back to that glory. Amen. Because sometimes I don't know, I've been in that place where I've been weeping. Why? Because it seemed like I'm so far away. You ever been in where the ditch seemed like it's so deep you can't even see a way out? But one night when I was in that ditch, I remember I had my gun beside me because I was a sheriff. When I took off my gun belt, I said, man, I just want to die. But the Spirit of the Lord came in that room and said, not tonight, baby, I got plans. You glory. I'm going to destroy my glory. <laughs> see, God ain't looking at it. You been in no strip club? He ain't looking at you lying. He looking at that. That's my future glory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, "Who's the point?" Say, I'm his future glory. You better say it. Say, I'm his future glory. Say, I'm his glory. Say, don't get it twisted. I'm his glory. I'm his glory. Yes, I used to be in the club. Yes, I used to be in the club. Yes, I used to hold that liquor. But I found out one day that he was way down and pulled me up and said, "Are oh, you an apple of my eye? Are you are my future glory."
message of reconciliation. Amen. But I had to get to the place and so do you God. I can't do something by myself. Every time I try to do something without you, I mess it up. Every time I try to do something in my feelings, every time I try to do something because it seems like the right thing, the devil always got me twisted. I feel like I'm a prosperer. I feel like I'm a do well. But I'm not talking about the kind of prosper financially. Sometimes we think we're going to prosper in life and we start making these decisions and all of a sudden we feel right back guilty. Don't yeah. nothing fill that up but Jesus. So I can't preach nothing but Jesus. Jesus is the connection back to the Father. Jesus puts one in a position to please the Father. He is your Redeemer. He is your identity. He says, can't do another part. John 15. But by this, my Father is glorified. Here you go. Y'all say, y'all ready? He said, by this, my Father is glorified. John 58, that you should bear much fruit, so you will be it's just my disciples. How do we glorify God when we produce much fruit? Amen. He says, don't think it's strange when trials come, I need to produce some fruit in your life. Remember what I told you, fruit is the nature of God, godliness. He said, I need to birth kindness in you. I need the birth joy in you. I need the birth self-control in you. He says, I'm a prune the vine. He says, but, but when you bear much fruit, he says, what's, I gotta get this is so good. If sin causes us not to bring God glory, then guess what? Jesus put us in a position to bring him glory. Yeah. Uh, so when you have the spirit inside of you and the seed in the seed now in you, I, I got saved and now I'm going through hell. It seems like all things going crazy. Why? Because he has to transform you. He has to shake you. He has to begin to break you. Why? So he can plant a seed in you. Why? To begin to spring forth fruit that you look like him. Amen. That you begin to look like who you were called to look like. Amen. Say, God, I. But see, we don't, in church, we don't became so black, we can't even see what we call look like. Jesus. We don't became so white, we don't, we don't became so, we don't, we don't, we don't became so foolish that people are adding things to the church now and making people think, well, if I get money, what that got to do with godliness? Amen. Amen. Preach. If I get education, what does that, all those things are good. But none of those things have power to transform you or make you a son or a daughter. Amen. Only Jesus. He is the seed that connects you. If he didn't die on that cross, you won't be connected. And neither will I. But see, the reason why you ought to get your praise on, baby girl, the reason you ought to get, because he did die. Amen. He did die. And guess what? He saw everything you're going through. He said, all the pain that you're going through, he said, I'm your rescuer. He said, guess what? He said, I'm your knight on the shiny armor. I'm your forgiver. I'm your redeemer. I'm the lover of your soul I like. He said, I'm the lover of your soul. But God, you know what I did last night? Yeah, I know what you did. And I'm still working. I'm still working. God, I was working. He said, but I'm working. God, you know, I got so much pain. That's all right. I'm the one. He said, I'm the one to clean up pain. Come in my classroom. Amen. So I can see what you see. You know why God sent you back? Because after He cleaned you up, somebody else still messed up. Yeah. See, it ain't about it. It ain't about money. It ain't about all the rest of that stuff. When He cleaned you up, He sent you to. He said, "I sent as, I, as the Father sent me. I'm sending them, and everybody who believes my word, I'm sending them. Why? Because your story gonna be somebody else's transformation. We make you gonna be stuck. You're not gonna be stuck in that situation. Why? When he clean you up, he gonna send, he gonna clean you up, he gonna strengthen you, he gonna encourage you. After you have suffered for a while, he gonna establish you. And when he establishes you, you gonna be a tree set beside a river, and you are gonna be able to eat from your life, to publish the book, all dropping the word, singing the song, dancing, and you are anointed. Anointed is what is a son, and when you are a son, you have a father, and when you have a father, no matter what you 
glory of God. Amen. You ain't no stripper. You ain't no H. You ain't no B. You're not no thug. You're not no G. Amen. You're not no N. Amen. 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 You are the glory of God. Amen. God called you Generation G. Amen. Glory, grace of God. I want to say right. Generation G. Godly, graceful, glorifies of God. God said, I'm godly. Um, graceful, graceful, and I'm a glorified God. God. Say generation G. Generation G. Amen. Well, somebody should have got happy about this. Amen. I am not my past. Because my past is washed away by the blood. Woo, I'm not my past. Because my past is washed away by the blood. I'm not my past. Somebody don't get it. I'm not my past. You can't tell me what I used to do. Why? Because the blood, the blood, the blood of the Lamb has redeemed me. I've been born again. I'm in class. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm in class. Amen. Take up my yoke and learn to me. I'm in class. My desire is to please my Father who redeemed me. You know why I'm excited? Because the Father redeemed me. I didn't redeem myself. Amen. If it was up to me, I would have stayed out this sex and lying road. I would have did it till I died. Amen. But I'm so glad that he found me worth saving. Amen. I'm so glad that he found me worth saving. Is there anybody glad that God found me worth You know why I feel so good? And God, he said, it wasn't about silver or gold. It wasn't what the world seeking for. He said, no, nah, no. Nah. It was by the precious blood of the Lamb. He said, guess what? What I had to redeem you with, silver and gold is nothing. And I had to bring the word of blood of God himself down here. And when the enemy looked at you, he see that blood and said, oh, redeem, 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 redeem. Look at somebody and say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what my mind says. I believe God. That's why I played that song. Do you believe God? Yeah. Cause sometimes my mind plays tricks with me. My mind try to tell me, you know, you still listen, you still doing this. No, I'm a redeem. Yeah. I'm highly favored. Yeah. You know what? You know, let me tell you something. Walking with God, people gonna start hating you real. You know why they gonna hate you? Because they can't break you no more. They can't control you no more. And then they'll be wanting, then if you're gonna be nasty, you're gonna be able to love. Because they can't. What? No? I don't have to curse you out. Are uh, you thirsty? What? Yeah, you, you're thirsty. Girl, I just cursed you out. Yeah, you're thirsty. Because I'm going to get some soda. You want me to get you one? I'm gonna get you one. Y'all laughing, but that's the glory of God. Amen. Babe, you ain't cooking, you ain't, babe, you ate. So you was out all day. You know I was out and you ate? Okay. Do you want me to get you something when I'm out there? That's it. Amen. Darling, what kind of love is that? What kind of love is that? Amen. Baby. Wait a minute. You talking about me with my girls behind my back? Why are you buying me a dress? Oh, is it poison? I ain't no poison, man. Because <laughs> when you start acting in love, you are blessing the world love. Because they don't, wait a minute, hold up. I ain't drinking that water. Why? Because they don't expect love like that. Because they know in their own mind, they're going to spit in it. Uh, okay. Why? That's because they heart not pure. Because the pure heart, all things are pure. See, people don't, see, Satan wants you not to trust nobody because he don't, because Satan don't operate on love. Right. You see, what love is, there's forgiveness. Amen. Now, baby, you okay? Are we learning? I'm almost finished. Are we learning? Yeah. Matthew 23, 23 says, then, then spake Jesus saying to the multitude and to his disciples, Saying to, the saying to the scribes and to the Pharisees, 
He said, describe the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. He says, let me tell you about the leaders of this time. He said, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. He said, all therefore, whatsoever they did you to observe, that observe and do. He says, the religious structure, as I want you to do whatever they tell you did and do. He said, but it's only one problem. That's what he said next. Mm, observe what they do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. God says, the problem that's going on with the religious order today, and many of us that we need to examine ourselves, we say one thing and do another. See, Jesus said, I had this problem when I came. He said, they were sitting in Moses' seat, the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious order. And they would preach. He said, do what they, see, say, do what they observe to do, because they're telling you the truth. They just won't do it themselves. So we like to beat people up the word, but we don't do that same word we beat them up with. We like to preach, oh, be holy, but we ain't holy. We like to preach mercy and grace, but we show no mercy and grace. He says, the, when Jesus came, the fair, the religious order, that was their problem. And let me tell you, I got to get this. Y'all got to get this. They were speaking the truth, but they were doing a lie. Now watch this. Let me tell you what Jesus called them later. He says, the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, your father is the devil. Mm -hmm. So what am I telling you? The devil can speak the truth. He just don't do it. That's true. That's true. The devil, because I used to be like, and I, I had to examine myself too. I used to be like, man, I knew this preacher. I see this situation, and they can preach. I'm like, that's the same. I'm preaching the same word. And then see them do something, or even myself, I'm going to be transparent, or myself do something, and be like, but that's not the word. Because guess what? If you hold in your heart, the Bible says if you see your brother in a fault, he who is spiritual, go to your brother in the spirit of peace and restore them. That's true. But I can read the scripture and preach it, mm -hmm. but then when I see my brother in a fault, I ain't saying nothing. Well, and when I do say something, I'm going to say it to this brother over here. I'm going to say it to everybody but the one I'm supposed to say it to. Come on. So, I got to get this. So there was a religious structure at that time who said they knew God, who preached the truth and observed to do the truth, but their works was contrary to what they was preaching. Does it sound like something today? Yeah. Does it sound like that people can tell you about God, but do the very works contrary to God? Yeah. And Jesus said that their father was the devil because the devil's job is to pretend like he like God but he can't really do God. Oh man, I know that kind of word. Mm. Mm. Because we, we, we like, because we, we don't got to the place, church, say amen. amen. I'm with you, I'm with you. We don't got to the place where we like hearing the word but not doing it. We don't got to the place where we like to expound on the word. Brothers like to sit there and debate and expound the word, but even while they expound it, they won't do it. Because the word says don't debate. And they're right there debating with the person trying to pull their own and moving contrary to the word of God and yet talking about they moving before God. So God says, the shift, the shift in class, I can't get you to major in something and send you without you being able to do what you majored in. Amen. Say, God help me. And, 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 and Matthew, it's in Matthew, read for yourself, it's in Matthew 23, 1 to 3. He said, man, them cats, the religion, he said, they preach good. Come on. We got people right now, we got two brothers, men of God right now, who are suing each other. Or not, it's in the news. And the word of God says, don't do that. The word of God says, take your brother and not the And then you will have religious people tell you, well, you know, but that's the next thing, no, their situation. The word of God says, it is better for you to take the loss. Right. So is God a liar or are you a liar? Yeah. If God says it's better for you to take the loss, then take the loss to keep the unity of the brotherhood. Amen. We say no. Then God turned around and said, your daddy is the devil. Because that's how your daddy acted. He said no. God says, don't hold. He said, forget it or we're going to learn. So we're learning. 
God says, forgive 70 times 7. You turn, we turn around and say, I'm done. God says, if they ask you for forgiveness, now watch, if you ask me for forgiveness, I'm going to forgive you. That don't mean I'm not going to be wise and not put my put certain situations that ain't going to happen again. Come on Because if you did something, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to, I'm going to let you go. But, but I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to be watchful because the fact is I, gotta need, I need to know that you, you all right. Because if, if you haven't changed, then it's on me. I can forgive you, then it's on me. If you're going to crack, I can forgive you for stealing my, pop, my, my, my my money. And I forgive you, I really do. I love you, I put food on your back. But I'm not leaving no money around, around you anymore because you're not delivered yet. That's it, right there, right there. I have forgiven you. I'm just using wisdom. That's it. And when you ask me for forgiveness, I forgive you. But don't turn around, okay, can you even bring me up? Because I'm not going to raise you off with that money. Why? I'm using wisdom. But I have truly forgiven you. Why? Because if I have a forget, I'm not going to bring it up. I don't hold it to your records. Amen. 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 He said, I like, anybody like you say, for they say and do not. I mean, do you know if I tell you I had a meeting with you on Tuesday and I'll call you on Tuesday? I said and I did not. Yeah, I'm going to expose myself. <laughs> because to say you're going to do something don't do it make you a liar. Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. Say, we're in the Word. And in the Word, the first thing Jesus said when he pleased the Father is this, I did not speak on my own. And the Word says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. See, I'm preaching, but I'm being preached too. Because what I'm preaching is stronger than me. He said, let your yay be yay, yet your yes be yes, and your no be no. Because anything else is sin. When you tell somebody you're going to say, when you say yes, you need to do it. If you say no, you need not to do it. And if you change your mind, make it clear. Make it clear. What is this going to do for us? It'll make you think before you speak. It'll make you say, before you say, I'm going to, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Why? I don't want to lie. Right there. I'll see if I can. Amen? Amen. I see. I see. See, when you when your no is no, you ain't gotta worry about that, that late midnight call. See, because your no is not know what you're doing later. I don't know. See, your no ain't no. <laughs> what I'm doing? Oh, cause my next question will be why? <laughs> um, because I may come back on no. I promise you, you won't be coming back here. Later. <laughs> Why? Because I studied in class. Yeah. And what did class tell me? Put no confidence in my flesh. Yeah. Yeah. I work. Yeah. In class told me, don't put no confidence in my flesh. Yeah. And also, class told me to bleed for lust. Yeah. Which I mean, it's not you, I just don't trust my own. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. Because <laughs> if I go over there, I can't tell you for sure I'm not going to do that. Well, you're a man of God. Yeah, that's why I still, that's why I still be into my power. <laughs> See, I, I can't tempt me. You can't make me prove who I am. I'm not going over the house. I'm not going to go over I'm not just going to You know, the answer is no. I know it's no. I'm not coming over there. But you know you're a mighty man of God, and I just need you to minister. Well, we'll do it at 12 o'clock at noon. In, in the midst of people. Come on. It's not you. It's not you. I just have to obey. I just want to please my father. Come on, somebody. Oh, you got some money? I need some money. Okay, you need some money? Okay, say it. You need some money? Look, she got her hand. I put her hand out. Yes, I said, you need some money? Okay. Uh, I'm not. How much you need? Say, give me that. Okay. She's looking for the $50 too. No, no. The I'm going to give you $50. I'll give you $50. The word said, don't look for it back. That's it. If you don't look for it back, don't give it. Yeah. Wow. Right don't give it. See, I've been in class. I know how to please my father. So, when he's my father, he said, when you give, don't look for it back. Why? Because if it don't come back, it may cost you back a certain way. 
So he said, don't let it be on them, let it be on you. So if you have it to give, yeah. give. Now watch this. Some of y'all looking like, if I ain't got it, don't force it. That's it. You mess around and gave your life, deal money, so much you can pay for them. Now you're looking for a truck. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? And God says, you didn't have If it's your life, deal money, you don't have it to give. That's it. Well, that's just, many family, many family members are messed up mm -hmm. because they gave and stepped in it back. That's true. Some of y'all look at me like, I don't know about all that. Is it, is it, my, that's what my father said. My father said, wait a minute, hold up. You talked about me behind my back? You slammed me? My father said, love your enemy. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Love my enemy. That's the word. He says, for the sinner love those who love him. He said, you have not increased. There's nothing been credited to you in your growth if you only love those who love you. You're just like the sinner. The sinner love those who love him. He said, but if you want to look like me, love those who don't love you. Amen. See, I'm going to tell you something. If this word is doing what it's supposed to do, many of us are examining that stuff like you're sitting there. Yeah. And, it's, and what you are thinking about is natural. What is it? You're saying, this is hard. I don't know if I can do that. That seems crazy. Well, watch this. How many of us was in class and you had a teacher saying something like, that's hard. I don't know if I can do that. Come on. Have you ever been in class and, you, and the teacher started, especially when you first take the class, you're like, man, what were they talking about? Talking about two plus, plus a two, two times and a three. That looked like, that sound like Google to me. <laughs> and you walk out of class talking about, I don't been to meetings. I, I, had a, I had a grant. We have a grant for Children Trust. I went to the meeting. They in there talking about statistics. And I walked out there being like, I don't know what they was talking about. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting there like, yeah, okay. Y'all understand? I'm like, at the end, I'm like, what is this meeting about? There are times when you come to church that the word may hit you and it may make you feel uncomfortable. Why? Because it's, it's trying to birth in you something that you don't have. See, when the world begins, it's a mirror. So when you don't have the love of God in you, and God, and you hear the word talking about the love of God, you're going to feel uncomfortable. And when I begin to tell you how the love of God acts out, and you're looking at, wait, wait a minute, hold up. You're saying love my enemy? I'm used to going to go, I'm used to want to kill my enemy. I'm used to send some boys out, I'm used to. But the word, you can't change the word because you don't feel that way. So no more than you go into a classroom and because you don't like what the teacher said, change it. What you have to do is submit and put yourself in a position where that word that they're teaching that you begin to digest it and it transform you. Amen. Not you trying to transform it. Amen. Cause you're like, well that's just how I am. That's your problem. How you are is one thing. How you are is a thing that's getting you in trouble. How you are has almost had you looking at 14 years in prison. How you are has you in child support court. How you are is has you in the clinic one if his herpes over. God says, I love you enough that I want to change you from how you've been. Amen. And get you to walk in glory. Amen. 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 Last but not least. He says, remember, the word of God is revealed in what we do, not just in what we say. Yeah. Amen. So I've been asking God, so I said, Lord, I don't want to be a I don't want to be a hearer of the word. I want to be able to do it. But I found out to be a doer of the word, you've got to study to show yourself approved. Amen. I see we do street ministry. I run into many people in street ministry who talk a good game. I done ran into brothers and I I mean I've been I've been sitting there we be chilling. While I'm talking to him, they're like, yo, man, that Jesus thing, boy, I like that Jesus thing. I'm like, yo, man, he good, man. Jesus loves him. Yeah, man, I love him too, man. Yeah. You walk to people. I'm not, listen, I'm trying to show you something. I ran into people who, who was drunk 
who can quote the scripture that would mess you up. I'm talking about, bam, tell you, Joe. And I'm talking about not only say it, tell you where it is and elaborate on it. But see, this is the deception. Satan can tell you where it is and elaborate on it. He just can't do it. He just can't do it. In relationship, many men and women can walk up to you and say, I love you. I love you, Tina. <laughs> and like, I love you. I want to get to know you. I'm going to be there for you, you know. We are so used to words mm -hmm. that have no power behind them. Many of us in this room right now are broken because someone gave you words, may have been a father, a mother, an uncle, that they could not back up, which left you hurt, angry, and bitter. That's why God says he watches over his word to perform it. He said, you can trust my word because my word will not return away. But many of us are struggling because you have had so many people lie to you. We have built relationships off of lies. So when we come to God, I don't know if I really believe that the white man did this. That's how I can tell somebody never wrote read the Bible. Soon I hear somebody say, a black dude say the white man wrote that Bible, I know he never read the Bible. That's true. Because if I was a white man and I wrote the Bible, I'm going to exalt myself all the way through it. There is nothing in the Bible that exalts a white man. Matter of fact, there's nothing actually that exalts a European white man at all. So if he wrote it, he did a bad job lifting himself up. Now, don't get it confused because he took a picture and painted it and put it on the wall. Because black did the same thing, took a picture and painted it on the wall. But my Bible tells me that Jesus said, you once knew me in the flesh, but you know me no longer. So if you're trying to get to know Jesus by what he looked on the outside, you're going to be deceived anyway. Because you're trying to get Jesus to look like you. And spiritually, Jesus is trying to get you to transform and look like him. That's him. Amen. Amen. Because love don't have no color. Forgiveness don't have no color. Mercy don't have no color. It belongs to the man who chooses to walk in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Kindness don't have no color. It belongs to the person who chooses to walk. Hatred don't have no color. Envy, jealousy, murder don't have no color. It belongs to the person who chooses to walk in it. And I've seen white men walk in it. I've seen black men walk in it. I've seen the red man walk. I see every color up here, I've seen them walk in hatred, envy, and jealousy. Every color up here, I've seen them walk in love. The, the, the choice is, do you belong, are you God's son, or are you the devil's son? Because you belong to somebody. Mm. The only thing good about God is, you can be adopted. Amen. So that was good news. Y'all missed that part right there. Amen. You could have been the devil's son for 24 years, Come on. and Come God on. adopted you. Amen. And watch you with your hands and begin to call you who you call to be. For whom he did foreknow, this is it, verse 829, to sum it up what I was just saying. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, that he might be the firstborn among many. Amen. God foreknew you before you were in your mother's womb. Amen. Hallelujah. God knew you. Yes, Lord. When you was when you was rolling out there, rolling dirty. When you was out there, I don't know when I was rolling, God knew. And even though I didn't know him, he knew me. And your actions say you know him, not your mouth. Because your actions tell me the kind of relationship you have with the one you say you know. Because if I say I know her, if I say I know her, and she my lady, right? I say I know her, this is my lady. But then I began to cheat with her. With her. My actions say, I don't really know her. Because how can I really say I know someone and don't care about breaking? Them? And don't care about using? Them? That's not the nature of God. Amen. So if you sit here today, and I believe everybody in this room, God brought you here today. Why? Because God wants you to understand that he predestinated you. He predestined me. 
the oh your mother. Hey, what, I said, what are you saying? I could have, I could have been born out of rape. God still predestined. Amen. Well, my mama said I was an accident. God still predestined. Mm -hmm. Amen. He had a plan for your life, which was going to be, well, which which was hid in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now it has been revealed that God has called you. It ain't no more church as usual. Church is a university. Amen. You came to major in Christ. And once this professor, that professor, and some of you all are professors, teachers, and once you major in Christ, you leave college, you leave college and you go to work. And you live a life that reflects you in your fellowship. Amen. He said, you always be ready to give an answer. Why? Because people don't wonder, why you want to act like that? What is it about you? It's my professor, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He taught me how to love when, I, when people didn't love me. He Amen. taught me how to forgive when people didn't want to forgive me. He taught me how to give when everybody was taken. <laughs> he taught me I was worth loving. <laughs> how did he teach you that? Because I lied. I called women to have abortions. I've talked about people behind their back. I did all this dirt. And he looked past all I did and said, I want you. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm like, you want me? Yeah, I want you. Hallelujah. Thank you. But how you, how you going to love me? You know all people I did wrong. That's what I died for. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I died for you to be free from all your sin. So if you're sitting there today, because true freedom is in love, and true love is in God. The world don't know what love is. They write movies about it. They write some of the most foolish songs about it. They write television shows about it. And if you go look at their songs and their movies and their music, within 15 minutes, within 15 or five, five or 15 minutes of meeting the person, they in the bed. They think love is pleasure. But God says love is sacrifice. I love you so much that I will jeopardize your soul. I love you so much that I want you to have eternal life for God gave you. I love you so much that I know you will work. If I, if I, even if I thought about having sex with you, I would give you my last name first. Why? Because I love you enough to make you one with me. He said, how will the world know that you are my disciples? He said, in the way that you show love. See, we got a church today that men and women of God, and I was one, I'm, and God had to check me. We like to preach. We like to entertain. But we, but we don't want to hear words. We don't even want to, you know what I told somebody, I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to be transparent and tell the truth. Tell you something. I'm always, I want to be back up. There's a situation, and there's a pastor that said something that, um, this was a long time ago. There was a pastor that said something or did something that I didn't like what he did and I didn't handle it that well either. And I had some things in my heart toward that pastor. And I never said anything about him. But I could tell when I heard his name he really wasn't. And then, what was funny, I had a daughter. I have a spiritual daughter. I have a spiritual daughter. And this pastor has a church. And I'm looking at, watch this, I'm looking at Facebook one day and I see my spiritual daughter with a young lady that goes to his church. And they out having lunch and enjoy each other company. And that thing pricked my heart. Not because they was having lunch. How can the sheep come together in love? And the shepherds justify that they won't come together. And God showed it to me again. I know another pastor, this situation, and I see his sheep hang out with, with and I'm like, they hang out. And we can't even call each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And there are men of God who will try to justify this in the word of God. Knowing they can. Because even if you saw me in thought, if you thought I was absolutely wrong, or I thought you were absolutely wrong, according to our Father, according to pleasing our Father, if you are spiritual, your job was to call me and restore me. Your job was not to preach before the congregation. Your job was not to throw me under the rug. Your job was to cover. And we, I didn't say them, we as men of God have not done it. And I apologize to the sheep. Because I was guilty too. And I'm in the shower thinking, man, how can I call this brother? What can I say? God, should I write a letter? What should I do? And I'm like, I haven't done anything yet because you got to let God lead you because you got to let God deal with it according to his word to, to do it in the right way. But you can't say that's not a major situation. Because it's just like parents. Come on, y'all. Think about this for a minute. If you're married to a woman and you have children, and you break up and you start slandering the mother in front of the children and you start slandering the father in front of the children you are raising rebellious children because the children love mama and daddy and what's going to start happening is when you see the child act like he loves mama it's going to make you even mad but the child is trying to teach you how you should be able you, even if you're not married anymore, the child is trying to teach you that you can still respect them you respect them for me amen, amen, sir. Amen. respect him for me don't teach me hatred, especially don't teach me hatred to someone I want to love Because I felt like I can't even walk in that church and you don't want, you don't know, why because of the things that people say and you're like, but then your daughters and sisters can walk. I'm like, God, this is so weird that the sheep have become the teachers. And the shepherds need to be taught. Y'all do know, even in the even in the situation on the news. I mean, with the two pastors fighting for the church, you don't think that's dividing people? Mm -hmm. Well, my church is this church, and my church is this, and my pastor is right, and your pastor is wrong. But the Bible says strive to keep the unity of the spirit. But see, we don't turn the church into a social gathering instead of class. And now men of God are trying to promote their church instead of build God's kingdom. And they got people going around talking about, well, I'm from first, I'm from first um Bukaba. I don't want to accidentally say somebody's church. And then they're gonna say, well, I'm from church Bukala. And church Bukala is better than church Bukaba. And my pastor is better than your pastor. You know, that's the vision. That's not God's kingdom. And we were, and you are not taught that in the classroom. And if you are taught that, then you are taught false doctrine. And if you are taught that, they call it the doctrine of demons. And you are taught a doctrine that is ungodly. But because you love that man or woman of God more than you love God Himself, you can't even love them enough to go to them and correct them. I'm just, God is talking to us. It's, it's the truth. So if you sit there today, it's about your relationship. God is calling you to be a son and a daughter. He's not calling you to be no Baptist. He, though you must be baptized. He ain't calling you to be no Jehovah Witness, though you must be a witness of Jehovah. He ain't calling you to be no Catholic, but he is the pyramid in which God is the throne, where Christ is the throne. He's not calling you to be the church of holiness, but he is holy. He's calling you to be a son and a daughter. Because if I walk up to this man right here and say, I'm Baptist, and he say he's Catholic, I just divided us. But if I walk up and say, man, I'm a son, he say he's son, we say, we got the same daddy. We're unified. It don't matter if they're black, white, Chinese, 
If they got the spirit of God, we family. Mm. That's why you don't know what color your husband might be. As long as they in the family. You don't know what color your wife may be. God ain't give God don't have to give you somebody your own color. Because you're supposed to, because you have supposed to evolve beyond that. He's gonna give you some, you got to have the, he said you have, you have to have the same spirit. If you sit there, I'm gonna do this. Uh, if you're sitting there today 